Mending and villager trading. These have been topics of much contention ever since Mojang's villager trading experiments. Those experiments, although they made some good changes, were certainly far from perfect. And ever since their initial release, Mojang has yet to test them any further. But let's just say for this video, if Mojang did return to the villager trade experiments, what would the perfect trading and mending overhaul look like? Today, I'll be sharing my image of one. In this video, we're not only covering some villager trading changes, but also an XP system rework, a tool repairing rework, as well as an enchanting rework, so there's a lot to get into this video. Let's start out with some of those big controversial changes that were made in the experiments, probably the biggest of them all being that librarian villagers would only sell certain enchantments in certain biomes with Mending being locked to the swamp, meaning that you would have to bring a villager over there. Biome locking the enchantments is a neat idea to encourage exploration and make it so that you can't get everything from one place, but I don't think it's entirely necessary. See, in my exploration video I talked about adding new village types and new villager variants. Some of these new villages would have a unique villager profession for that biome. For example, birch forests had beekeeper villagers, badlands villages had demolitionist villagers, and so on. I prefer this system because it offers incentive to go to different village types without requiring them to go through the tedious job of transporting a villager all the way to a specific biome for a specific enchantment. That being said, if Mojang were to actually biome lock enchantments, I think it should be under one condition. And that's that transporting villagers is made substantially easier and less tedious. Perhaps this could be done with camels so that when you're riding on a camel you can put a villager on the back seat. Or using trains that I talked about in the exploration video you could transport a bunch of villagers at once in one train car. In fact, even if enchantments aren't biome locked, I think this would just be a nice change. Especially if you want to get all of those villager professions from across the world into one area. That being said, there is still that big issue that the biome walking enchantments was attempting to fix. The fact that you can get every single enchantment in any level from one place with one villager. There was no need to use an enchanting table ever because pretty much any enchantment that you could get from an enchanting table you could also just get guaranteed from a villager. This is a common issue with new Minecraft features where one feature sometimes obsoletes another. I think I have a fix for this though. Ideally, we would want some kind of a healthy mix of players getting some enchantments from villagers, some from an enchanting table, and some from exploring in the ideal playthrough. Or at least we want the player to be encouraged to do that, so that they have reason to see more of what the world has to offer them. And the exploration part is already done pretty well. There are several enchantments now that are locked to specific structures and cannot be obtained from villager trading or an enchanting table. Meanwhile, practically every other enchantment can just be gotten from a villager. Perhaps that could use a change. Maybe there are a few enchantments that can't be gotten from villagers that can only be gotten from an enchanting table. I'm not talking about a lot of them, maybe just a few. In addition to this, why not make it so that villagers don't sell max level enchantments? Instead, they can only sell up to the second highest level of the enchantment. This way, the player will still need some more XP in order to combine the books to get the max level of the enchantment they want. Now, what about mending? Well, I've seen suggested from a lot of people just removing mending entirely, and instead making it so that items can be repeatedly repaired in an anvil without them ever getting too expensive. Which is a pretty interesting idea that I kind of like, but I know that would anger a lot of people, so I don't think it would be a very good idea to actually add in-game. That being said, maybe mending could be removed from villager trading. Instead, mending could just be obtained as structure loot, or in some cases as a bonus enchantment that you might get from the enchanting table if you're lucky enough. This way, players can't just get infinite mending for a few emeralds each book from a villager, rather they have to explore to get what is probably the best enchantment in the entire game. That being said, also, I think to balance mending, it should maybe be made mutually exclusive with unbreaking, so that you can only have unbreaking or mending. Or maybe mending could even come at the cost of not being able to have the max level of some other enchantment. 
And I know that might sound extreme, but I have a fix for it. A lot of people complain that they don't want villagers to be nerfed because enchanting tables require so much grinding to get the XP to use them. So how about we make XP a bit less grindy? What I'm envisioning for XP is taking it from something that encourages the player to just do the same thing over and over again for hours on end, to something that encourages the player to try new things for XP. Let's say every time you kill a certain mob for the first time, every time you mine a certain ore for your first time, you get a little bit of bonus XP for that, for discovering something new. And we could take this even further, introduce a system that is sort of like advancements. In fact, it could be built into advancements or just made as something entirely different. So that there are these certain tasks like advancements, but instead of you not getting any actual reward for doing them, you get a sum of XP depending on how difficult the task was. So like the advancement for killing the wither would give a large amount of XP. These aren't quests really, again they could be implemented into the already existing advancements. The only potential problem with that is that a lot of the existing advancements are very weird and specific things. There aren't many that are focused on general discovery or progress. But with this, XP wouldn't be nearly as much of a grind. Gaining XP could be a lot more enjoyable than it currently is. In addition to this, another problem with XP is that you lose so much of it upon death. And there was an idea that I saw suggested that could solve this. This was in a video by Minecraft Ideas Academy, where when the player dies, instead of all of their items just dropping to the floor, there would be a mob, maybe like a little ghost that spawns. And then the player can go up to that mob, interact with it to get all their things back, but not their XP. Or they can choose to fight the mob to get all of their things back and their XP. This way players who just care more about building and don't want to fight can just grab their items without needing to fight. But the players who care more about progressing and leveling up can take on the fight to get their XP back. I really like this idea and I think it would work greatly alongside these other XP changes. Now, let's address the trading system itself. Particularly with breaking and placing lecterns over and over again, it is very unengaging and just not fun or interestingly designed gameplay whatsoever. Even worse, this system sort of encourages players to put villagers into slavery camps, because that's great for a family-friendly game. So first, we want players to be encouraged and rewarded for treating the villagers humanely. I think the most vanilla-friendly suggestion I saw for this was in Green Jabs Fixing Minecraft Survival videos, where he suggested that villagers' trade prices would be lower if they moved around more and interacted more with other villagers. This fits well in vanilla Minecraft, it's a pretty simple and easy to understand system, and this way the current camps that players like to set up won't work very well because the villagers aren't being treated well. This encourages the player to actually let them live like people. But I want to take this a step further to ensure that villagers can't just be locked in some open basement. See, humans need sunlight for good mental health, so why can't the same be done for villagers? If villagers get no exposure to natural sunlight, then their trade prices will go up as a result, further incentivizing the player to let them live freely on the surface while not necessarily forcing them to. And this is important to fix because, honestly, it takes away from the uniqueness of each player's world and experience when everybody is doing the same thing, putting their villager into a little hole inside of a big trading hall with a lectern in a bed. It makes it seem a bit less like your world when you're doing the same thing as everyone else, when there's a definitive meta that's always the best, easiest, and most efficient way. Now, as for making trading more engaging, in order to keep that gameplay actually fun, repeatedly breaking and placing lecterns and repeatedly curing zombie villagers should be discouraged because that's repetitive and not good gameplay. Unless you, for some reason, enjoy that, I guess. So, this is what I propose. Librarian villagers can only sell an enchanted book once they reach level 2 or higher. In addition to this, their trades get completely reset upon zombification. Also, the zombification curing discount no longer stacks infinitely. Maybe you'll only get a discount for the first one or two times that you do it. 
And then finally, whenever you break and replace a villager's workstation, there is a, say, 5 or 10 minute cooldown on their trades resetting. This way, the player is encouraged to have more librarian villagers, because the more villagers they have, the more likely they are to get the trade that they want. And at the same time, they can't just keep breaking and replacing a lectern for a villager repeatedly. At least, not without a cooldown. And to balance out mending, I suggest it be made slightly more common as structure loot. And also, the cost for repairing tools remains the same no matter how many times you repair them just in case someone is for some reason having a really hard time getting mending. And those are the changes I had in mind. And now I would like to clarify, yes, trading and mending should be improved. I've seen plenty of people try to argue that no, it shouldn't, because Minecraft doesn't need to be fair or balanced, because the laws of good game design don't apply to Minecraft, or Minecraft should have bad game design for some reason. Minecraft is a video game. It's subject to the general rules of good and bad game design. It's not some magical exception. Yeah, it's a pretty unique game, but it's still a game. So yes, especially as a sandbox, it should be balanced and fair, at least relatively, so that the player has multiple viable options and not just one that is objectively better and easier than all of the others. And Mojang has also made it clear that they care about fairness and balancing. Keeping the game fair and balanced is always one of our top priorities. That's right, so now you don't need to just take my word for it that Minecraft as a game should be fair and balanced. You can take Mojangs. I personally am more inclined to trust the professional game developers over some random person saying that Minecraft is supposed to be unbalanced or unfair. But who knows, maybe I'm just crazy for trusting the professional game developers on what is and isn't good game design. Because, well, that's kind of their job to figure that out and implement it. But anyway, that'll do it. Thanks for hearing me out on this one. I hope to see you in the next video, whatever it may be. But for now, goodbye everyone.